Hi everybody, this is Nick from Sabres.com and today is a day I've been really excited about for a very long time. What you're looking at here is Project M. I've been working on replicas of this Sabre for over 20 years and this, Project M, I began in earnest about three years ago and I'm going to walk you through it. First I'm going to tell you what makes this the most accurate mall Sabre ever made and then I'm going to tell you about all the engineering features that were put into this hilt so that it can accept electronics of pretty much any shape and size. The entire thing is hollow, it has spring-loaded switches. I'm getting ahead of myself a little, but I'm just very excited about it. So why don't we get started? Project M was made using an original prop as reference throughout the design process. So this right here is an original prop from the film. This is one of the earliest examples of this prop to come out of the mold. We know that because all of the details are super crisp, all of the knurling continues all the way around each button. Contrast that with something like the EFX. So this is a really nice replica that was made by EFX using another screen used saber. But you can see that its source saber was from much later in the life of the molds that created these props because right here, around the silver button, a lot of this knurling is missing because it's been smoothed over as the mold began to wear. And that's true for all the buttons around here, and it's true for a lot of the details that simply get kind of smoothed over and smushed. The, the fins aren't quite as sharp or pointy at the top of this profile. They get a little bit rounded right here. That's just a, a consequence of, again, the mold getting worn away over time. So again, we were really fortunate to have access to this piece, which is really crisp and detailed all the way around each of those buttons. We just have so much really, really excellent detail to look at. Of course, we start up here by the emitter. These fender washers, they have a really particular look to them in terms of what the surface is like, how the imperfections of the fender cutting process leave these parts, and we wanted to make sure we replicated that perfectly for Project M. Project M is the first replica of this Sabre ever to use stacked fender washers and also be able to take electronics. And we looked high and low for the right fender washers, our thought being, okay, we're going to find the right fender washers and then we'll bore them out in the middle so that they work to fit a blade through them. But we couldn't find anything that was perfect. They just didn't have the exact same surface finish as the original prop. So we cut our own washers, of course. Not an inexpensive thing to do, but it was worth it for this project. The goal of Project M is to make the definitive version of this saber and have absolutely no stones left unturned. So we cut our own washers and um, do some special surface treatments so that they end up looking exactly like the source material. These are the other parts of the emitter. So the fender washers stack onto this component and then they thread into the body of the emitter where all of the fins also get slotted in one at a time and you end up with a completed emitter. So this is another Project M that's not painted yet. Uh, on the top of the fender washers, we have the, the same machined aluminum ring that was used on the props. So as you can see here on the original prop, we have a bunch of fender washers and then it's capped off by an aluminum piece. So we do that same thing. We cap it off with an aluminum piece. The other nice thing about this is that it allows us to hide the set screw. So the set screw is under this machined ring. We take that off. There's our set screw, so we can add a blade or put in a blade plug. You tighten the set screw and then you put the ring on and finish it up and it hides the set screw. We have blade plugs that replicate what the finished face looked like for a Hero Saber and without the blade plug in it replicates what it looked like in the one close up shot you see of the emitter uh, in the film. So both versions come with the Sabre. Let's move down a little bit. You might think we're heading towards the buttons, but no, we're still on the emitter. These fins are a super, super tricky part of this Sabre to replicate just perfectly. I've never seen anyone get the geometry of those just right. It's also tricky because depending on what your source material is, you may observe that the top of the fins is quite rounded, 
or you may observe that there's a little bit of a sharper corner there. Another crazy aspect about them is there are some artifacts of the molding process that no one has ever properly replicated in the Sabre before. Specifically, it's the fact that if you look down at this just right, this is not a straight line. It bows downward just a little bit. And so we replicated that properly in our fins. That artifact shows up in the original prop we have. It shows up in the EFX replica. And so we wanted to make sure that it was in Project M, and it is. So when you look straight down the barrel of these fins, you'll see that it's not a perfectly straight line, but it is just very slightly bowed, um, just like the original prop was. So we've got that covered. Next, now we will move down towards the buttons and greeblies and so forth. These also have not ever been done just quite right. A lot of people know that this LED is a found item, and so they get that relatively correct. But usually people don't get it right that this LED is recessed from the outer surface of the saber. So we do that properly. We made sure to get the height exactly right. I've never seen anyone get this rivet detail correct. This is usually replicated as a screw or something else entirely, but it's a rivet. And there are no hexagonal bores here. It's a round bore. Uh, this one, we're really fortunate to have an almost perfectly molded version of that on here. This is a piece that usually gets smushed a bit by the molding process. So here you can see this EFX one is, is smushed quite a bit, and most of them are. Um, but this one's really crisp, so this version of the rivet is uh, exactly the right dimensions, the right shape and size. So on Project M, those rivets are correct. Same goes for the buttons. I've never seen anyone replicate the silver button properly. It's not cylindrical. It has a really large rounded edge that makes it almost round through its entire run. And it has a whole lot of very fine vertical knurls. Usually people just do a few very coarse vertical knurls and call it a day. We went and actually counted the exact number of vertical knurls here. Again, we're really fortunate to have this as reference because if you try using something like the EFX, you see that the, the, the knurls never go all the way around on any examples of these buttons. So you might see these fine knurls and say, well, there's about 14 of them per 90 degrees. So there's either 52 of them going all the way around, or if we round up and say there was 15 per 90 degrees, then there'd be 60 going all the way around like a clock. And so one of those might seem like the right number, 52 or 60. When in fact, <laughs> there are exactly 55 vertical knurls on every single one of these buttons. Uh, no one has ever known that before because they've never uh, had an example like this and been able to count. But now we know, we're sharing that information with you and each of these buttons has exactly the right number of knurls. They're the right shape and depth and size and uh, as you can see, they're just exactly right. Same goes for the red buttons. No one has ever replicated this blanking cap perfectly before. We went through the trouble of um, creating our own knurling tools. Having one of those made from scratch is, is rather expensive and time consuming, but we wanted to make sure we got it right. And we had to do that two or three times because it was never perfect. And then we needed to make sure that when we had that knurling tool, that it was aligned properly when knurling the buttons out so that we had the same number of rows of diamonds and they were in just the right spot. It was worth the effort. Another neat detail, if you look at the rectangular pocket, that black wearing pattern really is only visible on three sides of the rectangle. This side of the rectangle ends up looking clean. The reason is that this rectangle pocket was not bored perfectly perpendicular to the axis of the saber. So this side of the pocket is shallower than this side. So this side ends up deeper and shallower over here. So when you do a black wash, black paint ends up getting cleaned off as you rub the saber clean. 
Another thing we're the first to replicate is that these buttons are not perfectly axially aligned with one another, but they're off axis in a repeatable fashion down the saber. So the red button is always a degree or two this way. The silver button is always a degree or two this way. Uh, I don't know the exact number of degrees for each button off the top of my head, but we were very careful to observe and measure that and make it identical. The reason for that being that uh, the prop makers only made one section of this red and silver button and then copied it throughout the saber when they were producing parts. And so any imperfections on this section propagate throughout the saber. So that is most of the the ins and outs of this Sabre in terms of what makes it accurate. Let's get now into the engineering and what you can do in terms of putting electronics into this Sabre. How are we getting electronics into this Sabre? How are they gonna fit? And how are we gonna get sound out of here if we put it in? First, let's start with the buttons. Uh, I didn't want anything at all to subtract from the accuracy of this Sabre. So, if you look at these buttons, they look exactly like the original prop does. Nothing is raised or lowered in comparison. Um, they've got the same O-rings. If you push on these buttons, they don't appear to move. Nothing appears to be happening. Um, and in fact, these two don't because these are thumb screws. I'll get to why in a minute. But these two are in fact spring-loaded switches. They are a five-part mini assembly that uh, has a lot of really careful engineering in here to make them just perfect. It's easier to see on this unpainted half Project M that has the O-rings removed. So you can see that these switches move beautifully. They are spring-loaded and they'll do a great job of hitting any tack switches underneath or any electronics that you have inside. And then when you put the o-ring on they still move they still have about a half millimeter or more of movement it's just virtually impossible to see because the o-ring under there is dampening that so this is actually exactly what we want because they function perfectly but you don't see it they're basically invisible so that's the buttons super proud of those super happy with that so now sound venting this is really the pied de resistance for this particular saber it is something I'm really, really proud of. These four screws, like I said earlier, they're not spring-loaded switches. They are thumb screws, exactly as the original parts were. So when we loosen these thumb screws, now the mechanism that's been holding this saber together is now loosened. And we can pull this apart for, boom, sound venting. Ha <laughs> ha! But Nick, you say, that looks like a whole lot of sound venting. What if I don't want my saber to be that giant? Well, you can pull them together, you can pull them apart just a tiny bit, or anything in between. It's a continuous mechanism that will allow for a little bit of sound to come out or a ton of sound to come out. And I don't have an installation on this particular one, but um, my theory is that even with just a little bit of this thing exposed, you're going to get quite a lot of sound out. This Sabre is uh, 28 millimeters in inner diameter all the way through. This is what that coupler looks like when it's out of the saber. It uh, doubles as the center O-ring. And that goes from here to here. And the inner diameter of that is 25 millimeters. So you could potentially have a 28 millimeter speaker if it sat over here, or you can have a 25 millimeter speaker uh, if you want it to sit closer to the center. But you can have a ton of sound in this thing and when you're done for the day, if you're going to turn the electronics off, you can, of course, put it back together for display. So you just set it wherever you want and then tighten down those thumb screws. Um, they are great. The saber is incredibly solid. There is no wobbling or wiggling of any kind. Um, it only needs thumb tightness and then you are good to go. I think the hardware is probably robust enough to handle at least some light dueling, but that's going to be up to you guys but I'm really, really proud of the way that this works right here because you just get the best of all worlds. You get either a perfectly accurate hilt or a ton of sound, whatever you want, or everything in between. Nothing to remove or to add or subtract, no weird couplers, nothing like that. 
But on that note, you can, of course, separate these completely. So this is just a half of a Project M that's not been painted yet. We include two different types of rivets with the Sabre. One is this threaded version that threads into the M8 hole that is on all four of the examples of the rivet. And if you wanted, you could put these rivets everywhere on the Sabre. We include enough for you to do that. You can also, if you choose, use this Delrin version as a kill key or a recharge plug. And it would go right here and it just slides into place perfectly. So you can either use it as a kill key or have a threaded rivet in there or both. You could take this out and then thread the other rivet in there if you want it to look perfect while you are using the Sabre. And no matter where you have your coupler set, the hole for the kill key is a slot so that if you choose to use it, no matter where you have the coupler set, it'll be just fine. These are gonna be sold both unpainted for those of you that wanna do your own thing and completely painted with this uh, prop accurate paint job right here. They are up for pre-order right now at sabers.com slash project M. We're super, super proud of project M. We're really happy with this and we hope you guys love it as much as we do. Thank you so much.